Check this out. Lauren Hill ain't the goat. It's all happening. Status I remember the first time I heard Lauryn Hill, 1994. The album was called Blunted on Reality. Pretty mediocre overall, but the song The Nappy Heads was incredible. To this day, it's one of my all-time favorite rap tracks, and Lauryn Hill's verse is majestic. Two years later, Wyclef Proz and Lauryn Hill set the world ablaze with their classic release, The Score. Six times platinum, killing them softly was an international success, topping charts all across the globe, it's all happening. The score really is an amazing project. It's an eclectic mix of hip hop, R&B, Caribbean rhythms. That's the definition of critically acclaimed. And not only does Lauren out rap Proz and Wyclef throughout the duration of that project, but arguably the entire industry as well back in 1996. Nas even had Lauren on If I Rule the World, the hook only. Godson, Godson coming off Illmatic was like, mm, you know what? I think I might come across looking a little better if you just sang on the hook, Lauren. And I'm not saying Nas was scared. I'm just saying that if he was, I would understand because that's how great Lauren was rapping back then. By the time her solo debut album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill was released in 1998, L Boogie was arguably the greatest rapper alive and easily the greatest female MC the culture had ever seen. No hyperbole. And to say that Lauryn Hill was anything short of the greatest female rapper ever was asinine. And it was more than just the indelible nature of the score and miseducation. It was more than just Mike Tyson type power punchlines like, even after all my logic and my theories, I had a motherfucker so you ignorant niggas hear me. It was more than that. It was more than the fact that those lines would float through the air like incense, yet still remain potent enough to floor even the most elite MCs. It was more than just her world-class vocals, her heavenly octaves that stirred souls and shook asses simultaneously was more than that. It's what she stood for. It's what she represented. At a time when female MCs and rap began subjecting themselves to extreme sexual exploitation as a means to progress in a male-dominated industry, a rapidly commercializing industry, L Boogie sold over 12 million records of miseducation by embodying an image overtly contra to the status quo. Miseducation is one of the most revered projects ever, and Lauren wasn't boasting about how she could make a Sprite can disappear in her mouth. She was imploring women everywhere to watch out because some guys are only about that thing. Hill was a triple threat. She graced the pages of Time Magazine and Rolling Stone and landed on the cover of Details. She broke all kinds of Grammy records for nominations and awards. She became an international sensation while staying true to herself and the integrity of women everywhere. Everywhere. She kept it real. She kept it hip hop. Oh, happy day. But a funny thing happened on the way to the promised land. Before Lauren's superstardom swept across the globe, her own personal sideshow crept into the rumor mill. There was a fantastic tale of a love triangle between her and Wyclef Jean and Rohan Marley. Rohan Marley was Bob Marley's son. According to a Rolling Stone article in 2003, when word spread of Lauren Hill's pregnancy, the Fuji camp didn't know whether the babies was Marley's or Wyclef's. Proz noted that that was a turning point in the group. At the same time, a rift formed within the group. Following the success of the score, Proz and Lauren supported Clef's solo project, The Carnival. Both members made guest appearances. If you haven't heard Lauren's verse on Year of the Dragon, punch yourself in the face. Link's in the description. But when Lauren began working on a project of her own, Clef failed to return the same support. Not only did Clef's disinterest frustrate Lauren, but reportedly it drove her to stamp an end to the creative battle the two maintained since first teaming up by crafting the ultimate album, free and clear of her bandmates' assistance. That album was Miseducation of Lauryn Hill again, and not so ironically, it settled the score. But where Lauryn Hill of the 1990s was exalted for her skills in trend-bucking bravado while her personal challenges remained on the fringe of her reputation, Miss Hill of the 2000s pulled a complete image 180. Her talents were now on the outskirts of her career, supplanted by a puzzling void of new music, a series of perplexing live shows, and enough speculation into her personal life to render her classic tracks 
arguably an afterthought. Her 2001 MTV Unplugged performance, for example, offered less of the empowered individual who exuded confidence in every bar and more of a broken spirit crippled by the confines of extreme success. Not only was her performance described as unhinged, not only was it released as a 22-track double disc that to this day remains a commercial failure, hovering somewhere around 600, 700,000 units in over 15 years, but her voice was excessively raspy, if not broken throughout, and her acoustic guitar playing felt overtly amateurish back then, as if she was relying on the same three chords for the duration of the project. Yeah. And that was just the beginning. Then there's decades worth of craptastic live shows, like the mixed reviews she received during Vibe's 2005 Music Fest in Atlanta, like her spotty vocals during Dave Chappelle's block party that same year, like her 2006 open rehearsal at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, where reports slammed Miss Hill's muffled voice and unflattering drastic alterations to her now legendary catalog, like 2007's performance at Brooklyn's Wingate Park, more mixed reviews, like 2010's Rock the Bells performance in New York, where people literally walked away from the stage in the middle of her set. I was there. Does this sound like miseducation to you? <laughs> Marcel Williams wrote a great piece for Hip Hop DX not too long ago. He outlined a terrible experience he had at a $180 Lauryn Hill show in 2014. By 2016, Miss Hill's leaving apology letters on Facebook after showing up hours late for another show in Atlanta, a pattern also 10 years played out. Since 2003, Lauryn Hill live shows have either underwhelmed or outright disappointed, leaving a generation of rap fans wondering what happened to the once undisputed queen of hip-hop. Speculation has reigned like spring in Seattle for years. Some point to Rohan Marley and whether Rohan fathering all six of Miss Hill's children out of wedlock had a psychological effect on the icon. Some wonder that maybe she fell for that thing. Proz once pointed to Lauren's one-time spiritual advisor, Brother Anthony. He described it as some weird cult shit in Rolling Stone article mentioned earlier. Rohan told TV One that Brother Anthony played a role in their separate in 2012. Maybe she just grew tired of fame and celebrity. It happens all the time. Maybe as she mentions in Unplugged 2.0, she fell victim to the public illusion and it held her hostage. Maybe when you have six kids, you just don't have time to be on time or to make music no more. I take care of my kids. The point is this. The who's, what's, why's, and how's of what happened to Lauryn Hill's career is personal, private information. And although her work has been celebrated by millions of people across the planet, she is not, nor should she be, beholden to the public. She already made miseducation. She's already done more for the planet than 99% of us that wake up every day. But since Blunted on Reality in 1994, Lauren's given us a mediocre group album, then a classic group album, one of the most revered solo releases ever in a genre period, then an album where she essentially plays three chords for an hour and 22 minutes. Then there's a decade and a half after that of additional crap tap live shows and a wardrobe gone homie the clown so when the math is done her career looks a lot closer to Biggie's only Biggie died in 1997 Jesus. The cultural force with those heavenly octaves and the timeless music that spoke to both men and women worldwide left us over 20 years ago, replaced by a reclusive enigma who occasionally pops up to deliver more questions than quality. I can't say Lauryn Hill, El Boogie from Brick City wasn't the greatest female rapper of all time, but I can't say she is the greatest. Static selective. Saturday, it's all happening. Thank you guys for rocking with us each week. We appreciate it. Two things real quick. Lauryn Hill is my favorite female MC of all time, even though very recently I've started thinking about how I just can't give it to her as the GOAT anymore, and that's even with a very limited female rap field. It's difficult to even think of anyone else because the last truly great female artist that I think comes to mind for most of us is Lauryn Hill. That lore is so magnificent, especially because she made miseducation. 
Period, which is bar none, period. One of the greatest albums, period. But when you start thinking about everything that's also been there and hasn't been there, she's also got some pretty incredible lows. And as a fan, that's what's most disappointing to me. Two, I do have a GOAT piece. I will name my female GOAT MC in the coming weeks. So know that this isn't something I'm just saying she isn't, but I don't have someone else that I think deserves it more. So we will see that as well. But I'm interested in your take on what this conversation is. Is the fact that miseducation and the score are so good enough to just wash out the other 40 years of female rappers? Or is there someone else that you think is more quali qualified or deserving of this title or deserves to be in this conversation? Let us know that in the comments section as well. Big shout out to everyone who watches this show every single week. I haven't done a goat piece in a very long time and it's been over a year since I did an ain't the goat piece. Biggie ain't the goat was the first ain't the goat piece I did and a third of y'all hated it. So we'll see what these up down up vote down vote ratio looks like on this one. Uh, I'm having a great time right now just in life in general and a big part of it is because of reinforcement I get from you guys. So what I'm going to start doing more is posting more videos and more conversation. I'm going to do more live streams coming up in the coming weeks because one thing that we don't do often enough at all around here is talk about new music as soon as it comes out. And I feel like it's taken me too long to get to some of the things that I do care about. Like this Black Panther soundtrack. If you haven't heard it, punch yourself in the face. Jesus, this mad boy is dope. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow at the company man on everything. So I'll have it.